These last several years I've reached some new conclusions, which I outline in my book, The Victorian Bush, Its Original and Natural Condition. I'm Ron Hately. I've been a lecturer in forest ecology for most of my working life. I come from Clunes in central Victoria, an old gold mining town, 150 or more years old. Looking at the what the Victoria's bush was originally like before disturbance. Now, basically I, I had a look at all the ecological uh, influences that might explain why things are like they are, the impact of settlement on fauna and flora, and particularly extreme events. A controversial part of the book relates to Aboriginal burning of forests and woodlands. After extensive research into the topic over about six years, I've come to the conclusion that Aboriginals were not managers of forests and woodlands as we earlier suspected, particularly in relation to fire. This has fairly important implications for fire management in the present day. This is particularly important now after Black Saturday, the need to find some way of managing forests to avoid devastation like that. Led to many questions. How much was fire due to lightning? How much Aboriginal action? How did Aboriginals use fire? In forests? In the Alps? In woodlands and grasslands? What about medium term climate change? So there were long droughts at times. One of the pleasures of writing the book was going through in fine detail early settlers' accounts of Victoria, uh, diaries, journals. It was Mitchell, the explorer. Behind me is the campsite that he used on the 26th of September 1836. For decades I've been observing the countryside and thinking about the processes that shaped it in the past and still do. What role did mistletoe and dodder, traditional enemies of Victorian foresters, play in primeval environments? What other major forces were there? Tornadoes? Indigenous grazing animals? Frost? Hail and snow? At the end of a 13 year drought, I've realised other forces often prevailed. We can see them here downstream from Clunes at Fossett Ford. Flood sweeping away streams fried vegetation, heavy rain softening soil and toppling even long established huge old trees. Land managers, students, teachers, researchers, people interested in conservation, local historians and general readers are enjoying this book.